So uh, Jag, tell us, this is your car. So so tell us about yeah, it, what is it? This is uh, the legendary E46 M3. And what does E stand for, Boris? Engineering series. Engineering series, that's exactly right. And this is, uh, I've owned this car for 15 years. So, you know, I'll do an episode on all the stuff that I've gone through in the last 15 years of ownership. But this is mainly my track car. I think the last time I went was at Road America and it just went straight in the garage and came out here. Yeah, you still got the numbers from Road America on it. Exactly, and yeah. it's pretty dirty. I mean, I, don't, I love the car as it is. I don't do too much to it. Um, and uh, one thing we want to answer, Boris, is this car worth the hype? Is it the legendary car that everybody hypes it up to be? I believe it is, but then I'm biased. Number one, I've had an E46 M3. Mine was a 2002. Yep. And uh, I only sold it because I wanted to have a mid-engine Porsche. And uh, my wife said, well, you can, you can have a mid-engine Porsche, but you're gonna have to sell something. So uh, um, sadly, I, I let the E46 go. I wish I had them, I really miss it. Yeah, I think there's some uh, nostalgia there because I think this is pretty much the end of the line for the ultimate driving machine before they got bigger, heavier, more tech, uh, and away from, uh, I believe, chassis dynamics compared to what they're more engine now. And you drove an M2 competition, you know how much engine that had, like how much power yeah, it, it Yeah, we'll have to do an episode on this M2 I just drove last weekend at Circuit of the Americas. But, you know, I, I remember this car so well. I mean, the one I had, um, and I remember how, how, uh, how practical it was from one thing. Because you know, I would take it to the track events and I would put a whole complete set, I would flip that rear seat down and put in a complete set of track tires. And then I would put a piece of carpeting on it so I could put my luggage there. And I still had the whole trunk left over for rotors, pads, tools, etc. Yep. And, and another seat in the front for a passenger. Yeah, and it's, and it's a great GT car because I drove this from uh, Washington State all the way to Road America where I met Boris. I did five track days and then drove to Florida. Yeah, I don't back know if in I could, I don't know if my uh, body can still do that, but I did it in this car. Yeah, and you know, that's, I guess, another reason I'm biased towards this car because it brought us together. Yep. Um, and, uh, uh, but, you know, back to the car itself, uh, I think the heart of BMW, all BMWs, I, mean, I shouldn't say all, but at least uh, the early BMWs and even some of the present day BMWs is that inline six. It's naturally balanced. There's no vibration. There's no need for counterbalance shafts. It is, it is sort of like, people say, it's sort of like taking a hot knife through the butter. It is so buttery smooth. And especially this S54 engine in here, in natural uh, state, it's putting out about 333 horsepower at sea level yep. uh, through a six-speed manual that shifts really smoothly uh, and a limited slip diff. It's that drive line that I think is essential to the way the car uh, performs, and not to mention the fact that, you know, they, they went ahead and put things like a lightweight aluminum hood on the front of the car to keep the weight down. There's a lot of aluminum components in the suspension itself. Um, so there, there are a lot of reasons why, why, why BMWs achieve that ultimate driving machine um, uh, line. And, and it's, you know, I think it sort of faded a little bit when this engineering series, the E46 was replaced. I think the E30, the E36 and E46, you know, were exemplify all of that. But then BMW switched from that inline six, which gave it the character that, that BMW's always had to a V8, yep. which was he much heavier. And yeah, you were sure. gonna buy one of those, but you test drove one, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I actually liked the car, uh, especially because it was doing well uh, in IMSA. Um, and, um, but when I drove one at the track, I realized how, nose, how, much nose hev how much more nose heavy it is. And, uh, and other enthusiasts shied away from it as well. But the other thing is the styling. Yep. You know, this has those smooth flowing lines. It's a classic look. It looks right. good from any angle. Right. It's, and, it, and, and then the switch was to those more chiseled uh, lines, which, you know, I've grown to like. And, uh, uh, but not as much. I think this car is aging so well that even uh, as old as these are getting now, they still look fairly modern. Yeah. And this is, I mean, when you think about it, I think it went on sale in 2000. So this is the design here is 21 years old. And uh, going back to the engine, this engine is found in, I think, the E37 Z3 and also the E85 Z4. So it's produced from 2000 to 2008. And right. there's so much support, aftermarket support from these cars. And a lot of things that have changed have only used OEM because it's lasted so long. Everybody says the cooling's an issue. I, I've been tracking this car, I think, for seven years. 
I just changed the cooling system because of age more than anything. The oil cooler is still original. I haven't changed that out. I haven't had any cooling issues. Um, you know, going back to the motor, it's pretty robust, cast iron block, aluminum head. I haven't had any issues with the head gasket, but a lot of people claim, uh, complain about and I track it. It's the original clutch in this car. Um, it's an amazing engine. Uh, like Boris mentioned, it's S54 V32. Uh, you created two versions of this, one for the CSL, which is the HP or high performance version. Um, you know, it has over 100 horsepower per liter, which is back then was amazing. Even now mm -hmm. it's uh, an amazing engine because if you look at the, I think the Coyote V8 5 liter, that's only about 92 horsepower per liter. And this is, uh, you know, over 100, I think over 104. And you only see those in supercars back then, and you saw yeah. this in a BMW. And again, it's naturally aspirated, so the throttle response is really crisp, very linear, which makes it ideal for heel toe downshifts, makes it ideal for, for track days, but also it makes it a joy to drive on the road. Yeah. yeah. So should people buy one of these? Because when you look at it, they sold about 86,000, so it's not that rare, and it's probably the most popular two-door because it only came in a coupe at that at, the, at this time so should someone buy it yeah it's probably a little too late to get <laughs> to get a really good deal on one yeah you know it's one of many cars i shouldn't have sold <laughs> <laughs> but you only know that after the fact that's though, right <laughs> and usually a decade or two too late yep and uh, didn't narain own one as well yeah yeah and he loved it and uh Narain, um if you don't know narain he had the 997.1 that we reviewed a couple weeks ago right right and he still talks about it. Uh, I don't, you know, I, I, I've been a BMW enthusiast. I think the spin says, spin says 15 years, but the spin's at least five or six years old. And um, I don't know any of my fellow BMW enthusiasts that don't love the E46 M3. And not only the M3, but the, the entire uh, uh, lineup of yep. the E46, whether it's the, whether it's what it's the, the cabriolet or the station wagon, you know. And you had a E46 328? We had, let's see, my parents had one, our son had one, uh, and we had one. Uh, and then I had the M3, so we had four in the family. I mean, yeah, E46 chassis in itself is an yeah. amazing car. They're easy to work on. I yeah. mean, there's so much support for the car. Yeah, you know, uh, my wife, she, this is her favorite BMW, and you know, we, we, we do dealer trades for the BMW dealers, so we get to drive all of them, yep. every single model made. Um, and uh, and I, like you said, I drove that M2 competition at, at Coda. And uh, you know, it's, it's, still, it's still the one, yep. you know? And uh, you know I love E30s. Uh, I'm not a big fan of E36s, sorry, but um, I love E30s even though they're boxy, but they're just so robust. Um, and uh, but when it comes to the, you know just the overall package, uh, the size, you know it's not too big, it's not too small. The quality, you know E30 was was awesome, but E36, let's face it, things got cheapened up a little bit. The quality came back up with the E46. Yeah. So the combination of of styling, you know, performance. The level of quality um, and, and that's why um, you know they're very desirable yeah, yeah. it's an uh, it's amazing car with that my name is Jag and I'm Boris and we'll catch you next time